Hello and welcome to the latest Q&A in Screen International's For Your Consideration screening series. My name is Stuart Kemp and I'm delighted to be speaking to award-winning director Cynthia Wade, award-winning director Sharon Lees, the filmmakers of a documentary film, The Flag Makers. Wade and Lees' documentary is a, it poses one of the questions, who is the American flag for? Employee-owned Eder Flag in Oak Creek, Wisconsin, sews and ships 5 million American flags a year. The flag makers, locals, immigrants and refugees um, stitch stars and stripes as they wrestle with identity and belonging. The flag makers is an intimate glimpse into the people whose hands make America's most recognizable icon. Welcome Cynthia, welcome Sharon. Your film is a fascinating examination of the American dream what does the American flag mean to you? Um, Cynthia, if you'd like to answer that first and then Sharon. Well, thank you. Um, increasingly, I grew up loving going to Fourth of July parades and picnics and, you know, um, just enjoying the holiday in, in July every summer. But increasingly over the years, I was feeling uh, a sense of um, discomfort with the American flag and really had felt like it had been co-opted um, by a very narrow uh, group that had a very strong political view that was nothing like my political view. And I became more and more uncomfortable with the American flag. And it, it felt like it was something that was being signaled as like a certain set of values and they weren't my values. And I thought, but this is my flag too. So it really came from a place of sort of sitting with my discomfort with the American flag. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, it's very, very similar in that there's been an evolution of my relationship with the flag, you know, from being um, in elementary school and saying the Pledge of Allegiance and, you know, sort of being naive to it all, but feeling like, wow, we, we really, have this wonderful country and we celebrate it and that's what this flag represents um and that's also coming from a um from from a place of being um a privileged white person and um as a kid and then as time went on i would see the same thing that cynthia is talking about in terms of the the flag being co-opted and and it taking on um instead of a unifying symbol it became a divisive symbol um and that um you know was extremely disappointing that's interesting as the as your ex experiences evolved and your knowledge of it and your and your uh feelings and emotions towards it uh, expanded um how, how did you find the Eden flag factory and 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 obviously why why was it the perfect location for making this film that that discussed those changes in feeling toward the, the flag itself. Mm -hmm. Well, Cynthia and I have been friends for a really long time and we've collaborated on projects. We also do um, do our own things. And we talk a lot about what's going on in the country and in the world. And um, we were talking about um, immigrants and wanted to, as, as anti-immigrant sentiment was growing in the United States, we wanted to um, see if we could explore doing a project in that area. And we found a, we found a, a program in Kansas City where there were women going through, who were immigrants going through a, a program to learn how to become seamstresses. And at the end of the six week program, um, they would get jobs. And one of the women got a job in a flag factory in Kansas City. And that really opened our eyes. And Cynthia and I were like, that could be the film. And maybe we should we should look for a flag factory where we could that has immigrants and refugees as employees. So we did a nationwide search and um, and found this flag factory in in um, Wisconsin. And um, Cynthia was on a commercial shoot in Chicago very close when I reached out to them. And um, I called her and said, can you get to Milwaukee tomorrow? And she said, sure. <laughs> I mean, how long did that search take? Sorry. We were searching for several months, um, but the film was shot over the course of three years. So we started this as an independent project. We had no funding. We asked you know, some of our close collaborators, a director of photography that we work with, et cetera, like, can you just defer? I mean, just like every documentary filmmaker starts any project. 
Um, so we started shooting, we got permission in April of 2019, started shooting July. So we were at the first July 4th parade in, in you know, with the flag makers and their flags and the town uh, for that July 2019 shoot. And then of course we all know what happened in 2020 and that was really unexpected and it, for every filmmaker, uh, everybody, it's been unexpected. So then we ended up spending longer amounts of time filming really these micro movements of the country, like certainly the pandemic was worldwide, but there were just other things happening in the United States, the divisiveness, the tensions, um, and just decided that we would just spend our time embedding ourselves and really these micro movements with our flag makers through 2020, 2021, 2022. Um, so we actually were filming all the way through May of 2022, it was about three years. Uh, and on that, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated at how you how you chose editorially how you, how you chose the people in the feature uh, because you go to the factory and there are many workers there. But how, how did you pick the the people you wanted to uh, uh, highlight in in the documentary? That was really tough <laughs> because there are over 200 employees and there are over 200 incredible stories. So. Um, it was it was really hard. We met with um, we spent a long time just meeting with people uh, without cameras and getting to know the the factory and getting to know the different workers and um, and we met Radisa when we first met Radisa, who is the first person um, that uh, is the person that guides us through. We both thought that that she could be our guide. Um, she, she's, the, she's the sewing manager, right? Yes, yeah, so she kind of surfaced for us as like, wow, this is this is our person. And then we met more people. And then we got into the editing process, which I know Cynthia can talk a little bit more about. But we got into the editing process. We had three different editors, three different times. And we kept we were changing the story around because we were trying to find the best expression of this material. And um, so we we turned we turned it into a verite film, on, verite only film at one point, and then we went back to having Radis's voice um, kind of guide us guide us through the story. But it took a really long time for us to be uh, to know that. Well, three editors, it's it's uh, invisible stitching. It's fairly uh, it's not obvious at all to the viewer that you you had that. So that congratulations on that. Um, what were the most challenging moments during the filming? Mm -hmm. Well, the pandemic, number one. Um, if you think about a 200 person Midwestern factory uh, through 2020 and 2021, there were whole swaths of months we were not allowed in. I mean, for good reason, right? Um, and the whole purpose of our film, the reason we wanted to follow the flag makers and, and embed ourselves in the factory is that there was this incredible sort of cross pollination that was happening, you know, in the break rooms. I mean, they have, you know, this amazing uh, sort of dining area where they bring in these foods from all over the world, these home cooked foods. I mean, the smells of like coming out of these Tupperware is uh, food that is being uh, heated up in a microwave. It's like you, you smell Moroccan food and Mexican food and Serbian food, and it's really extraordinary. And there are radios that are playing um, throughout the factory and people have their, you know, sometimes it's their home country flag, sometimes it's like the photographs of their family back home. So it's really this international experience. Um, it's like the United Nations to be inside of the flag factory. But in a pandemic, if everybody is wearing masks and shields and there's plastic between them, you, you, all of that is um, taken away from you as a storyteller. Uh, so we, it was the reason we actually had needed to spend more time is to sort of in, work around and through the pandemic, and then, and then also really meet the flag makers where they were. So you know there are scenes that we shot outdoors with long lenses or through windows or through doors just like lots of filmmakers have had to do in the last couple of years. So that for sure, the pandemic was tough. A multi-character film is quite tough, particularly in a 35 minute format. Like when do you sit with one character and just allow things to unfold in silence with reflection? And when do you kind of shift over into another character? So that balance is what took us a year plus with the three editors. Like just, we had many, many iterations of the film before we really figured out sort of like, okay, we're gonna stay with this person, then we're gonna to shift to this story. Um, that, that balance was tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would also add to that, that it's, um, 
it's really, um, it's, it's a humbling experience to um, communicate with people who you, when you don't speak their language and um, it was, and it was, and it was challenging. I mean, there were some people on our crew who spoke Spanish and that, that would help. Um, but we thought it was really important to, even as some of the immigrants who'd been here longer spoke, um, spoke English better than I could ever speak their language. We, we felt it was really important for us to um, let them do their interviews and ha and speak their their mind in their in their native tongue because it was just really important that we have interpreters and let them communicate how they would want to communicate and that took more time so it was challenging because you have to be more patient it's harder um, to develop intimate relationships with your subjects when when you don't speak their language. Um, but, um, but we felt that that was really important. And even one of our editors started learning Arabic because she wanted to, she, she wanted to really understand what they, what people were saying. Um, and, and finally, uh, I, I wonder if you could each give me, um, a couple of thoughts on what you hope audiences feel after watching your, uh, very, uh, emotional and uh, affecting film. Well, one of the things, oh, sorry. Uh, one of the things that, um, that we both feel, felt when we um, walked into, that, into the factory is that um, we're never gonna look at the American flag the same way again. And we, we really hope that whatever that means for people who watch the film, that they gain some new perspective or some new insight into our relationship to to the flag and our relationship to this country. I my hope always is to make a film that is the goal is always to make a film that is is transformative in the experience for the audience members where you start in one place and you end in another. And the thing that um, we really worked, I mean, I think just patience having those three years for these like very small but large moments in sort of American, the tenor of the country, quite frankly, and, you know, through the eyes of the flag makers, just spending the time with them over time. But, you know, ultimately, I think the film really does start in one place and ends up in another place. Um, and as Sharon said, in that, for audience members to sort of reflect, you know, what do they identify with, whether they're American or not, you know, how do they, um, how do they feel about their own countries, their own identity, their own flag? And what does it mean to, what does a flag even mean? Like, how, how can it either unite or divide? Um, so I, I, there's a lot, I, I was sort of polarizing myself in terms of the flag. And I feel like I, I personally have a much more sort of gray area, nuanced feeling about the flag now, even just knowing that 10 people per flag uh, right, there are 10 sets of hands that touch every flag that goes through this flag factory. So those are 10 stories, 10 different people um, with, where they have, many of them have risked everything to come to the United States. Some of them are Midwestern born and bred. So all of those stories, and as Radisa says, like the thoughts and the feelings of the flag makers, every star, every stripe is sort of in that flag that then goes out into the world. Did, did it surprise you both? The, the the journey that your own the, the documentary took you on. I mean, I mean it was every, very surprising. Yeah. Yeah. It's that way with you know any any film that you do. And one of the surprising things for me was how hopeful um I became and how um how optimistic um the um the flag makers are. Yeah, that optimism sh um, shines through. It's it's almost they're 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 sort of very forgiving of uh, of the circumstances in which they find themselves. I mean, the the thing that I really I think we both really didn't want we did not want to make a simplistic portrait of like oh wow they're immigrants and refugees that make the American flag like we live in a complex um, troubling sometimes very dark some often quite violent, also very, can moments of sort of unexpectedly hopeful um, 
still there's a promise of maybe that this this sort of great um, experiment, this de democratic experiment could work out and not implode. So that so we wanted to be able to make a film that held both the the dark side of our country, um, the gray areas of our country, and also uh, the hope like that we can recognize that all of those things can exist. Um, they exist every moment of our lives um, and our experiences and therefore should exist in the film. So um, just we wanted to just be able to hold both the dark and the light, like it's both hopeful and kind of devastating to, um, you know, to be alive. And so certainly we, and, and certainly over the past few years here in this country, we wanted to be able to sort of hold both things that, that there can be many truths in, in, in a single moment. Well, I think that's a perfect um, way to uh, finish. And I'd just like to thank you both for taking part in Screen International's uh, latest um, for your uh, consideration scheme. Uh, it was fantastic talking to you both, and um, I do thank you very much, and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much.